Hello, welcome back to Empress Path. My name is SBJ and today we're going to be looking at arcing and sparking. So those of you who have ever visited a railway on the south coast will know that as a train goes over the third rail, at some points it arcs and sparks. And the reason for this is it's the shoe of the uh, pickup basically coming into contact with the third rail, which is the part of the rail that supplies power. As it does that, it creates a, a spark effect. Now, you see these all over the south coast if you travel by rail on any of the electrified units, and it's a fantastic sight to see. Adding third rail to a layout is really, really lovely, but creating that sparking effect just adds that little bit of to make it even more realistic. This is something that I've been putting off for quite a while simply because I thought it was going to be too complicated. That is until NSC Latchmere released two videos explaining how you can simply create your arcing and sparking effect. So if you haven't already, I'm going to link below and I'm going to put one up here the videos that I used in order to do this. Now, I can't thank NSC Latchmere enough for doing this because their videos are so short, simple, and just precise that it it makes this entire process easier. However, if you want the long version of it, you've come to the right place. Uh, I'm gonna be going through the installation process with you and going over some troubleshooting hints and tips as well. So all of the parts that you need for this process are going to be in the description below. I'm going to leave links to all of the items that I specifically purchased. I'm not endorsed or have any affiliate links with these. These are just the products that I purchased in order to do this. Now, my method means that you can use it for DC or DCC. And the reason I've chose this method is because I'm a DCC layout. It means that I don't have to worry about connecting to any particular uh, parts of the rail. I can just put this in after the fact. So the tools that you're going to need for this process, first of all, let's get a soldering iron. Uh, if you're not very good at soldering like myself, uh, see if you have a friend or family member who could help you do soldering because I'm absolutely rubbish at it and I did it all by myself. Next, you're going to need some battery packs. I used two double A's as my battery pack size, which equates to three volts, which then I've matched on the LED that I've chosen. If you want a brighter LED, you can up the battery pack, uh, which means that you can then up the LED as well. So take that into consideration. The most crucial part of this is we're gonna be using a reed switch and magnets. If you've never used a reed switch before, like myself, uh, it is basically a switch inside a little glass tube. What happens is as a magnet passes over it, it pulls the switch together and allows the circuit to operate. And that's fantastic. And that's the basics of what we're gonna be doing here. The most important thing here is to check that the reed switch that you're buying is small enough that it fits in between the two pieces of rails. If you don't, then you're going to have a problem where uh, it's not going to fit in there. But also, these are incredibly, incredibly fragile. So as you bend the uh, the legs on it to put down into your layout, you have to be very careful not to break it. I bought a pack of 10 and within the first five minutes I'd broken three already. So take that into consideration when you're building this. As well as all of those previous parts, the other thing you're going to need is enough cable. I can't stress enough how, uh, how much extra wire you're going to need because everybody's going to have a different place where they're going to put their battery packs, a different place of how they're going to feed their LEDs through. And it's just making sure that you have enough of it before going ahead with this process. Um, and th that's the thing I stress the most. So let's go to Pass Sam where I'm gonna talk about how I installed these and how I built up the circuits. I'm gonna show you how I do all of it along the way. Okay, so to give you a rough idea of why we're doing this, what we need and things like that. So we've got our battery box, we have got our reed switch, we have got our LED. Now this is a three volt uh, power supply because it's two double A's and this is a three volt LED. Now I've used the type that have got like a flat top on them just to try and hide them a little bit better when it goes on the layout. But just to show you the end result of what we're gonna be looking for. So this is a neodymium magnet. Uh, this is a, I believe it's a three millimeter magnet. That's, that's not thick enough for what we need but it's also too thick in the actual uh, size of it, simply because that'll end up catching on the bottom of the rail. So we don't want that. So we want six millimeter magnets, which I have on order, which will hopefully be here by the time this video goes live. Um, but this is just to give you a rough idea of how simple this entire circuit is. So here's my magnet going over my reed switch. Oh, oh, there we go. So the magnet rolls across. Oh. 
apparently tries to attract to the light as well. And that's all it is, but it's a momentary thing of, come on, there we go. It's that simple. Now the magnet goes underneath the uh, EMU that we're going to be using. So it's a rough idea of where you're going to place it. I'm just going to show you now. So here is uh, a class 416, 416, I believe it's a 416. Let's go with 416. Um, and you can see it's got the pickups there for when it goes over. Now the motor version of this has a cover that goes all the way under here. Uh, the reason I'm highlighting that is because it means that it will be easier to stick a magnet to and we will show you that when it comes to the final part of this video. But effectively you want to put the magnet under here in line with your pickup shoe so that when the magnet goes across and it's located here it will go bloop and it will make the light light up. So there's a rough idea. So I'm going to uh, start making batches of these and I'm going to bring you along for the ride. So one of the hardest parts of here with the way that my layout is set up is trying to get the reed switches and everything in and trying to pre-solder and pre-wire all of them before putting them in. That's not going to happen here on my layout. So what I've done is I've created little pre-soldered sets where I've got orange wire and the grey wire, uh, the grey wire uh, going off to the battery pack, the orange wire going off to the LED. Um, hence why the, that one's a lot shorter. I've pre-wired these up and bent them. Now, I bought 10 of these and in the process of trying to carefully bend these, I broke three. So bear that in mind when you're buying these. These are extremely fragile because as NSC Latchman says, these are glass. So when you're bending them, try and make sure that that the switch is facing in the right direction because um, otherwise the magnet may not operate the switch as it goes over it so bear that in mind so what I'm doing is I've pre-drilled the holes here so I've got two holes in the center where the reed switch is going through the orange going on this side going down and then immediately back up through here once again all pre-soldered at the end uh, and the gray is going underneath which will go to the battery pack eventually now the reason I've done it like this is because I can now solder the um, solder the LED onto the end of it uh, easily and then with the cable running off the LED that will go off to the battery pack so it's just about trying to sort of preemptively get everything set up and ready to go so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to solder the LED onto here and then run the other wire from the LED off to go towards the battery pack and hopefully that will complete the circuit so I've got all of this uh, soldered up uh, I hate soldering and you will learn absolutely nothing from myself by watching me solder. So I haven't I haven't filmed that. However, I have confirmed that this works. I've run a magnet over it to make sure that it lights up, which is great. The next step to test it is to mount a one millimeter by sorry, a six millimeter by one millimeter magnet underneath. I've put it in line with the shoes, which are the pickups for the third rail uh, so that when it runs over the magnet it should give that nice arcing and sparking motion so i flipped over this uh, forcep uh, and i've put one up this end and i have also put one up this end now i haven't had to glue this one in because as i went to glue it in i realized that the screw underneath it would magnetize to that so the screw underneath has got a magnet attached to it um, which should hopefully set it off as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to let the one at the front dry uh, and then we're going to run it over the uh, read switch here and see if it lights up now as I say I have tested it but just so that you can see that it does work I've got a reel of magnets here there you go so let's see if it works in a second let this dry and we'll come back and run the forcep over it okay so uh, I've done some testing since the last video the magnets have Dry, dried they've, they've glued in place uh, underneath now I had to add an additional magnet underneath the front bogey to get it to pick up the reed switch and likewise on the back one I think there's six six by one magnets underneath there so um, bear this in mind when testing it I ordered six by one magnets I'm definitely going to be ordering at least six by two magnets going forward possibly a couple of six by threes as well simply just so that the gap between the screw underneath the back bogey at least picks it up um, you may have different effects of it I don't necessarily want to mess with the reed switch simply because it's made of glass it works so I would rather make sure that the electrical connection works and then the magnets are absolutely fine underneath I'm going to be testing it to see 
if those magnets start catching on points if they do that's going to be a problem but that's something that i can address let's just quickly show you it working there we go first and the last one coming up there you go and to show that if for any other reason i had to have the loco coming in a different direction it would work going the other way as well now I have a DCC layout, so bear this in mind when you're uh, choosing whether to do this. Uh, and as he latched me, it does have their own version of doing this with DC, which is a much easier method because you don't need to buy the battery packs. Uh, you just need to solder to the tracks, which if you haven't already uh, ballasted is perfect. This was an easier method for me for DCC. Um, and it means that I can get to the battery packs and change those over as and when I needed to. So I've put a few strategic locations around the layout where uh, I'm going to be able to see the lights going off a little bit better. Some of them I've put in a position where I may not see the lights going off, but uh, depending on the angle that I'm filming from, you may see them. Uh, so let's go and have a look at where some of the places I've chosen to install some later down the line. So I've drilled a hole down here on the uh, inside line coming on. Uh, you can see I've moved the third rail for the moment just to make space for the hole for the LED. I mistakenly drilled a hole on this first bit here, but on the second one over here is where I actually want it to go. So I've drilled one there. I've also put one in coming up towards the point on the canal siding. Um, I honestly can't remember whether it works going at the end of uh, the third rail or not so someone can correct me on that and tell me i'm doing it wrong uh, but i've put one here where if need be i'll just move it a couple of bits up and put it to that uh, third rail over there in the station area i feel like the best place to put them would be the one that i've already installed down here uh, another one here as you can see i've moved over the third rail whilst, whilst i'm doing it uh, and then one over here as well uh, mainly for a point of interest it's coming out the tunnel it would be nice to see that lighting up every now and again um, and then let's go and have a look at the other side. Now I haven't drilled holes here yet. I'm going to be looking at doing that later today. Uh, I feel like putting one over here would be a good idea uh, and possibly one here, but then that means that there's four at each end of the platform, uh, between the ends of the platform. So maybe just doing one over here, not having one here will make it a little bit more fun. Alternatively, I could put one down on this corner over here. The problem with putting it on anywhere, the third rail is on the inside line uh, and it's inside the track is it means you won't necessarily always see it so it'll have to be based on where you're filming from finally on the more scenic part of the layout the, the greener area uh, i've put another one down here on the inside and another one down here on the inside ready to put those leds in now i have drilled one to be set up underneath here in hopes that you'll be able to see it go buzzed as uh, the train is in the tunnel which i think would be a really cool effect uh, i've Got it so that it's just on the other side of the um, start of the fiddle yard and hopefully that will mean that I can have the light in there but it will show up and if it doesn't it doesn't that's absolutely fine uh, but yeah I'm trying not to do too many it's a fantastic feature but I don't necessarily need a hundred of them on the layout so yeah And there we have it, arcing and sparking via third rail. It's an extremely simple process, and I do urge if you haven't already, please go and check out NSE Latchmere because you'll get all of the information from there. A couple of tips that I would like to add on after the fact that I find very important in this process um, is how I pre-soldered everything before taking it up to the layout. The first one that you've seen in the video was done as it is in the video. What I've done for the packs that have gone on afterwards have all been done very differently. Rather than putting the wires onto the reed switch, what I've actually done is I've extended the wires on the battery packs. That makes everything so much easier to solder up onto the layout because everything effectively goes back to the battery packs. So I mount my battery packs underneath the baseboard, pull the wires up through, and then I can put the reed switch on the end of there. Then I can put the wire from the reed switch to the LED. Then I can put the LED uh, cable all the way back to the battery pack, which is already flowing through. Whereas the previous one that I did, I had to solder underneath the baseboard and I'm bad enough at soldering than having to do it underneath the baseboard. So bear that in mind. Here's just a look at what I mean by extending the leads on the battery packs. So what I can do now is I've added these additional 
bits on here. Don't ask about the colours, I'm an idiot. Um, but I've effectively put the additional lengths of cable on there, so these will pop through the baseboards that mean I can then solder onto the reed switch and the LED as needed, and then it, it's not a case of me having to scrounge underneath the baseboard to try and then solder these later down the line. Therefore, not going to hit my head, not going to drop my soldering arm on, on myself or have balls of solder fall on my arm like happened before. Uh, also, I don't necessarily cover it when I install the first one. There are little holes here which allow you to screw these onto uh, the baseboard or wherever you're going. So uh, there's the support beams underneath. I have some little screws which I'm going to put just one through here. That means I can put this underneath the board nice and safe. It's an extremely simple process. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's something that you think, wow, that's, that's, that's great to have on my layout and I'd like to do it too. If you've already done this before, then please leave a comment down below. And especially if you've done it in a different way, let me know. Other than that, if you'd like to see more videos like this, then you can let me know what you'd like to see in the comments down below. If you haven't already, we have a Facebook group, a Facebook page, I'm on Instagram and all of those wonderful things. If you'd like to support me, you can support me on Ko-Fi or Coffee, depending on your preference. And if you would like, there are some Emperor's Path merch available on Redbubble and the link is down below for that. Thank you very much for sticking around to the end. I hope you've enjoyed it. YouTube's now gonna suggest two videos to you that it thinks you're gonna like. Bye.